Welcome to Engineering Live. I'm your host, Matthew Arasakti, and I'm a junior here at UK studying computer science. We're coming to you live from the Gann Student Center in Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you for joining us for Engineering Live. We have a great broadcast for you tonight. I'm joined by three of my fellow engineering students, and tonight we'll be chatting about life as an engineering or computer science student here at the University of Kentucky. Additionally, we'll be answering your questions throughout the broadcast, so I hope you have those ready. But before we start answering those questions, let's go around and have our students introduce themselves. We'll do name, hometown, and state, major, what year you are in school, and some things you're involved in here at UK. I'll go first, of course. So my name is, again, Matthew Arasakti from right here in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm a computer science student here, and I'm a junior here at UK. Some things I'm involved in, I'm a tour guide at the Visitor Center. I'm a vice president of the Engineering Student Council, and I'm also an engineering ambassador here at UK. Lily? Hi, my name is Lily Kirby, and I'm a junior in biosystems engineering. I'm from Muhlenberg County, Kentucky, in Western Kentucky, and some of the things I'm involved in include the Student Sustainability Council. I'm the events director of the Energy Club. I work at the Innovation Center. I am in the SEAM program. I'm also an ambassador, and also I'm on the quarter scale tractor pull team. Hi, everyone. My name is Dale McCoy. I'm a mechanical engineering major and I'm a junior from Cleveland, Ohio. Some things I'm involved in on campus would be that I'm a College of Engineering Ambassador, a Lewis Honors College Ambassador, the Vice President and Parliamentarian for the National Society of Black Engineers. I'm a resident advisor and a UK 101 peer instructor. Hello everyone, I'm Zachary Wedding. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. I graduate in the spring of 2022 um, and I'm a mining engineering student. I'm a part of Triangle Fraternity, uh, the Society of Mining, Metallurgy, and Exploration. Uh, in that organization, I'm a part of the Mine Design Competition Team, uh, where we're designing metallic mine. Um, I'm also a UK 101 peer instructor as well. Nice. Well, thank you all for doing that. But before we get going on our conversation tonight, I do want to make note that December 1st is the early action deadline to submit your application for the fall 2022 freshman class. So high school seniors, be sure to submit your application by December 1st if you haven't already. Lastly, I want to encourage anyone who has not visited us to consider doing so. We offer online and in-person visits. You can check out our visit options at engr.uky.edu slash visit. The link to visit us is also in the description below. And also, just a reminder, remember to post any questions you have in the chat box below. We have someone looking at that and we're happy to answer any of the questions you guys have for us today. But let's just get us started. You know, we're going to hit those big questions that a lot of students have about UK engineering. So how about we just go down? We'll start with you, Lily. How about you tell us about why you chose UK engineering? Yeah, so when I was looking at my different choices as far as what I was going to do for engineering, I knew I was interested in engineering and I was looking at some of the better programs. But what stood out to me for sure about Kentucky was how broad our subjects are. So we have so many different types of engineering. And within that, there's so many different minors and certificates. I really felt sure that no matter what my interest ended up being, that I would be able to find it here. So for me, um, I'm from Ohio, so I knew number one, I really wanted to get out of state. Um, <laughs> what I really like about our engineering program is that um, our engineering program is the top, top ranked engineering program in Kentucky. So that really was an eye opener for me. And then I wanted to be somewhere that really poured a lot into their engineering program. And just with our living learning program, which we'll talk about later, I just know that we pour a lot into our engineering program and we definitely, um, there's a whole lot of support in it as well. Uh, so as a mining engineering student, our community is very small across the nation. Uh, the University of Kentucky is one of 12 schools that even offers an undergraduate degree in mining engineering. Um, so if I wanted to have that option, you know, on the East Coast, there's only two to three schools that I could choose from. So the University of Kentucky, I felt like had the best program, especially on the East Coast and nationwide as well, when you compare us to Colorado School of Mines or Virginia Tech, you know, the University of Kentucky was the best option for me in mining engineering. Yeah, we got a lot of great opportunities and resources UK for all of our students. So it's a really great thing to be here at UK. We're pretty lucky you're over here. But uh, Jayla, you mentioned something very important that we wanted to talk about. Our living learning program here at the University of Kentucky at Woodland Glen 3. Do you mind telling us about that? Yeah, so um, we have many dorms on campus. Um, each dorm is home to a different living learning program. So Woodland Glen 3 is the engineering le living learning program. It's where all of our engineers can be. Um, the dorm is about 700 people, so we have a lot of different engineers, very diverse men, women, um, everyone there. We also have 
a bunch of different programs in the engineering living learning program. So like the study where you can go to get help in your classes. We also have um, engineering 101, which is actually taught in the engineering dorm. So that's just something very convenient for students who live there. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of the biggest um, programs that most people want to be involved in. Lily, you want to talk anything about your experience about the LLP? Yeah, I did live in the LLP in my freshman year, and I, I know I met most of my friends today and people I still talk to from living there. Uh, so there's so many study spaces and so many awesome places to meet. Uh, it's just a bunch of people getting together, always something to do. I had a really great experience. And then for me as well, I think the the fostering of the community of engineers that is our LLP is just fantastic. You know. When you have a lot of people who are like minded individuals, you know, they're there to support you when, you know, things get tough or, you know, to help celebrate the victories that you have in your degree. And then even there for, you know, just outside of school as well, you know, there's just this community that, um, you know, is just built that we are engineers and that, you know, we are very similar in that regard. Yeah, I remember my first, the first thing that comes to mind when I think about my time in the LLP was that, you know, since we're all engineers in that same place, I remember I was working on a question in class. I had no clue how to do it. My roommate, no clue at all, knocked on my neighbor right across the hall, did not know, went down the hall, did not know, but we formed a group and we got it all figured out in the end, which is a very cool thing about the LLP. So we're all in those same classes and it's a great experience and great resource as well. But speaking about those classes as well, one of the cool things about the engineering program here at the University of Kentucky is our first year engineering program. So Lily, if you want to talk about some a bit about what that is actually? Yeah, so for me, the first year engineering program was really beneficial because basically what that is, is the group of classes that you take in your first year, including engineering 101, 102, and 103. So that means that you don't have to choose your major your freshman year. So I came in very confused and I was able to spend that year funding going through the first year sessions in 101. We talked about all the different majors and it really helped me find that biosystems was the right place for me. And then speaking off of that, one thing that I just really liked about the first year engineering program was the hands-on experience that it gave me. So in high school, obviously, you don't really get a lot of that. But here, um, when you take Engineering 103, you get to be in a team for the whole semester. For me, I got to work on building a catapult. I formed great relationships with my friends. I still talk to those people to this day. It's fun competing, trying to see if your catapult gets the farthest. And it was just a whole lot of fun. And it definitely gave me um, a look into the real world of what engineering can be like and the possibilities that can come from it. I think for me, uh, my favorite part about the first year engineering program was EGR 101, uh, where you really got to do a deep dive into the engineering majors here at the university. Um, and so for, for me, it really reinforced that I wanted to go into mining engineering, uh, but I did have other options in place if I so chose to change my major. Yeah, it's a really great thing that first year engineering program. I know I wanted to come in as a computer science student, but it's a great way of like figuring out, you know, what do the other majors do and how do I intersect with them in my education and also as a career path later on in the future. But we do have our first question in the chat box today for <laughs> Engineering Live. And so Stephanie asks, is there a large co-op and internship program at UK Engineering? And Zach, I know you're very, you've done a lot with co-ops and internships. So how about you start with that and we'll go on and talk about the rest. So I think the mining engineering department has a very unique place in the overall co-ops and internships here at the university. Uh, the main engineering co-op center is, uh, you know, in Argan uh, with the rest of the majors. But however, for the mining students, uh, companies come every week uh, for the Society of Mining Metallurgy and Exploration uh, who specialize in recruiting mining students. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities uh, to work in the mining industry, especially if you are a freshman. Um, and I know I've had an internship after every summer uh, of school, so it was really crucial that, you know, my department was uh, supporting students in getting internships. So speaking on behalf of the mechanical engineers here, there are definitely a huge demand um, for co-ops and internships for us. One thing that I really like about the UK College of Engineering is that we have a career fair in each semester. So um, in the fall, we had a College of Engineering Science career fair. And so there are hundreds of companies that come. I remember we had like 120 companies that came, you name it, any company, they were there. And so um, there are multiple opportunities for mechanical engineers, industrial, electrical, you name it, they're there. Um, I really take advantage of those. I know each time I went, I always left with an offer. 
um, I've been able to co-op with GE Appliances in Louisville, and I would have not gotten that um, opportunity, that co-op, if it wasn't for UK College of Engineering and just the resources and how they've prepared me um, to do well in the interviews at um, the career fair. So definitely a huge demand for co-ops, internships, research, all of that. Yep, I interned at Logan Aluminum this past summer, which is kind of local to my area in Western Kentucky. And I know that they are also one of the companies that came to the career fair. So that, there's not only that whenever it comes to the Career Center, but I think it, you have to mention that those, they're there for any career advice. So even dropping by and showing them your resume or just talking about like practice interviews, there's tons of events going on at the Career Center. Um, and speaking on biosystems, I know we also have advisors in our later years that are specific to us that know maybe a little bit more about our interests and they're working on getting us job offers more co-op offers i just feel um there is a lot of support here at uk for that yeah that engineering career and co-op office was a great resource all i have to do i made an appointment online as quick as that. i met the next day and it was a great way to like find the different resources and opportunities that uk has to offer but lily you talked about something very interesting about advisors here at uk so i know engineering of course is a kind of can be a difficult major sometimes and so a lot of times you kind of need that support as like advisors for figuring out okay what classes do you want to take and how do i want to shape my path here at UK. What has been your experience with advising here at UK? Yeah, so your first year, you'll have a first year advisor. And because I was in honors, mine was Jennifer Dorge, and she was amazing. And my standards were so high, and I was so sad when it was time to leave her. But then in my second year, it went time to get my biosystems advisor, and I got Dr. M, and she is just as amazing. And she's so helpful. I can really tell that she wants what's best for me. It's not just about, you know, UK. And there's more additional advisors, like I said, now that I'm deeper into my major. And I've had a great experience with every one of them. So kind of like her, I've had an amazing experience with our advisors so far. What I really like is how they really care about me as a person. You know, they care about my mental health. They want to make sure that I'm okay. When we're in our um, meeting appointments, it's not, you know, oh, like, what are you doing for classes? Like, you know, they want to make sure, like, Jayla, how are you doing? Like, is this, are you struggling? Do you need help? You know, um, whenever I email them, they always answer, no matter how late or early. Um, they're there for me. They want me to know that I can lean on them and count on them and even cry in their office if I have to. So I just really like how, it's like I have another mother, like, you know, or another family member here looking out for me because they truly do care and they make me feel at home, which was something that I really wanted when I was looking um, for a college. And they definitely do a great job of that. Yeah, so Paul, uh, Jayla, we have actually a question in the chat box just for you, actually. So <laughs> okay. Paul wants to know, how did you know that you wanted to study out of state? And like, how did you end up here choosing Kentucky? So um, how I knew I wanted to study out of state. Um, so for me personally, I knew that a bunch of my friends um, in Ohio, they were like staying in Ohio. And I just knew that I wanted to go out of state. I wanted to go somewhere kind of far from home and like spread my wings and fly. And I was definitely looking for the place that had the most opportunity for me, a place where I felt like I could fit in. And so when I did a tour here, um, I fell in love, which is why we definitely um, strongly encourage you guys to come over here and tour. So uh, when I toured and I walked the campus, um, it just felt like home. I looked around and I said, yeah, this is a place that I could definitely be. And um, so that was really what um, led me to study here. Yeah, and we have another question actually in the chat box, so we can go for Lily if you want to start talking about it. Davey wants to know, does UK have senior design or engineering projects here? Yes. So as we mentioned, we are very unique in the fact that our first year actually has projects as well. So you will have plenty of hands on experience there to talk right off. But then additionally, each major will have their own kind of version of a capstone or senior design project. I know that for biosystems, that's a pretty big deal. It's in your last year senior project. And uh, I think everyone has a pretty good experience with it. I'm not there yet. I'm a junior, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a bit more. And just as a whole, even if it's not something as big as like a senior design project, you still do a lot of projects in smaller groups. So engineering as a whole is teamwork. And so through my classes, I've definitely um, gained more skills and just teamwork and working with other people. So even if it's, you know, a simple PowerPoint presentation, it's still a project that I'm doing with three other people learning, growing, getting stronger in that area. So you'll always do some type of project in your classes, whether it's a huge senior design project or a simple five minute presentation that you have in front of the group, you're still going to be doing projects with people, which is what I love about, you know, engineering, you're with people, you're not alone. So I really like that. So mining engineering has a two semester long senior design project, which 
Uh, I'm on my first semester of that. Um, so there are different groups. Each are assigned a unique uh, commodity. So I have coal. We also have uh, gold, copper, uh, aggregate, uh, sand and gravel. Um, so it just varies from year to year. Uh, and so, you know, to begin your project, you're giving all the geological data and then you're giving your coordinates of your, uh, you know, boreholes, your, your drill data. And then, um, you know, you were told to just go from there. You know, you utilize all the information that uh, you've learned from over your past four years uh, and from every class. Um, and so it's a very, uh, you know, intensive process. Um, you know, the professors, you know, expect you to guide yourself you know, through this project from your previous experience and your internships and your, your work, and then also from your courses as well. And so, you know, next semester, I'll go into the, the deeper dive of the design work and all of the, uh, you know, processes. Uh, right now, we're just doing a lot of the, the beginning and exploratory work. Yeah, computer science also has that two semester senior design project too. So I'm definitely looking forward to that in the curriculum. But yeah, Davey, Paul, Stephanie, thank you for asking those questions. Hopefully we were able to answer them correctly. Guys, just want to remind you, if you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box. I, as the host, love putting these guys on the spot, <laughs> asking them all these questions. But to our next question, Connor wants to know if undergraduate students have access to the same hands-on experience with technology in class that graduate students do. And Connor, hopefully I'm going on the right track with this question here, but one of the biggest resources that I've heard about in the College of Engineering is the Innovation Center. Mm -hmm. And word on the street, Lily, is that you're really involved with that. So how about you give us give a shot at that? Yes, I do work at the Innovation Center. So we have an amazing makerspace here on campus. It's my favorite place on campus. I love to talk about it. Um, so what's so cool about it is that any student can use that space. So it's not um, just for people who've been taught it. There's two students in there. We have mills. For soft materials such as wooden foam, we have a Tormach, which is a metal mill. We have a PCB mill, which can make circuit boards. All the 3D printers you could want, PLA um, and resin printer. We also have laser cutters, embroidery machines, vinyl cutters. So really that lab is just a space for your first year engineering. You'll be required to come in. You'll be required to use the 3D printer, the laser cutter, the vacuum former, which like makes molds, as well as the PCB mill. So that's immediate direct hands-on experience with equipment. And then that space is also just open to you from nine to nine throughout the week. And you can go in any time and it's just material at cost, no cost to use the machine and use it for your personal projects as well. I should probably print out something and I can give it to my mom for Christmas. I yeah. think that'd be a pretty good idea. We're pretty popular on yeah. Christmas. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you'll see me there on December 25th, folks. Well, probably before that, hopefully. But uh, yeah, hopefully you got your question answered, Connor. But Andrew is here with another question. He wants to know what the average engineering class size is like. And if you, don't, if you guys don't mind, I'll take a shot at that. So actually, Andrew, over here at the UK, our average class size is actually 25 students. 85% of classes here are about 50 students or less. And so over here, especially with engineering, how it works is that a lot of your introductory classes are those bigger classes. So of course you have your lecture classes, like let's say for those uh, calculus one, biology one, classes of that nature. Maybe you'll be in a class size of about 200, 300 students in those bigger lecture halls. But as you move up into your major, you get into smaller class sizes. So for example, my freshman year, I was in a physics one class, about 300 students over there. But now as a junior in one of my machine learning classes, I have about 30, 40 students. And some class sizes I know are even smaller. Yep. Zach, do you have anything you want to add on that? Um, so I took a surface chemistry course with the mining department last semester, and we had five people. Um, so the average class size in the mining department is 20 students. But as we get into our technical classes, that can go down from anywhere to one to five students, depending on what course is offered. Um, so the mining department is actually a lot smaller than the other engineering departments and relative to the whole university we're very small what's it like in mechanical engineering do you know? yeah so i would definitely say um you know mechanical engineering department it's definitely a little bit bigger than most um departments uh kind of like how he was saying in our typical um chem 105 classes that you take freshman year you know you still have around 200 students but as you definitely keep going up um it does get smaller i know in my statics class Right now, there's about 30 of us, Calc 4 classes, about 25 of us. So um, it's still a good amount, but as you keep going, you know, you get reminded of that high school classroom size, 20-ish people. So that's really nice. You get the best of both worlds, so um, yeah. 
Yeah, and there are a lot of resources here at UK also to help you in those bigger lecture sizes as well. And we'll talk about that in, in just a moment. But uh, Jacob here, he wants to know, and also, thank you guys for asking all these questions. Please feel free, put some more in the chat box. We love hearing them. I love asking them, so it's a lot of fun. But uh, Jacob wants to know, as a student that is undecided between engineering and business, what would your pitch be for engineering at UK? Really? I can take that, yeah. So I think a few of us have mentioned the SEAM program. So I'm actually in a program in the Honors College, which is uh, Scholars in Engineering and Management. So we do actually have a little bit of that business knowledge. And I'm also planning to get my MBA in my fifth year, staying one extra year to get my MBA. So I am interested in the business side of things. I definitely feel if you're someone who likes something hands-on and you really want it to um, in your time in college really see what you're going to be doing. I think that engineering is a great way to go. I'm really secure that I could find a place in any kind of field where they would appreciate an engineer. So with me looking at sustainability, for example, um, I, there's a lot of ways you could go about it, but I was sure that with having an engineering background that I could really solve the problems I was looking to solve. Yeah, I'm definitely a little bit of bias. Um, I definitely think engineering is the way to go. Um, I think that right out of college, um, there are definitely more jobs in demand and available with an engineering degree, but I'm also in SEAM. And so I think being in SEAM is a wonderful program that everyone should apply to. Um, it gives me the best of both worlds. So I've had the opportunity to take some um, business classes, which I love because it was a break from the you know hard science and STEM classes. Um, I learned a lot, and so I definitely think if you're on the cusp, like you know, applying to like SEAM would be um, a great program because it gives you the best of both worlds. You still get an engineering degree. So, so most mining companies will set you on track for management in your first three to five years, um, and partly that is due to their you know, their hiring practices. So most mining companies, especially Mark Marietta, Vulcan, uh, will set you in a management trainee program. Um, so many of the seniors in mining engineering are applying and interviewing for management trainee programs. And so those are a two-year management program, and then they put you into management uh, at the completion of those programs. So I know most business majors or you know, other engineering fields, you know, that management track is much slower, especially in a small field like mining, um, you know, where managers are in high demand, um, you can expect to be in management within three to five years. Yeah, so there's a lot of intersection over here with the engineering and business. So even if, if you haven't seen UK or the campus, actually the engineering complex is right next to the Gatton College of Business and Economics. So it's pretty cool about that as well, yeah. Along with my engineering majors, computer science student, I'm also a business minor, so I've really been interested in the doing that a combination of both. So it's a really great thing that we have here at UK. But, but uh, we have another question here from Davey, and he wants to know, besides engineering, would you say UK offers substantial and unique electives to take as well? So I guess in that sense, about talking about some minors or certificates that you guys know about, or just some fun and interesting classes that you guys have taken outside of engineering? Yeah, really? I, can, I can start on that. So. I'm mentioning certificates, I'm also getting PEAK certification. So that's Power and Energy Institute of Kentucky. So I knew I was interested in a little bit more than just sustainable engineering. I knew I wanted to take that focus on energy. So those do introduce both engineering and non-engineering classes. I've also gotten my lean certification, student lean certification. So that was more of like manufacturing side. And then I would say with the honors college as well, I think I took some classes that I might not have taken just as an engineering student uh, that were really interesting to me and a good break from the STEM classes. And speaking off of that, I would say that UK actually encourages people to get a minor or get a certificate. Um, as I said, I'm a mechanical engineering major, but I'm getting a minor in computer science, which is definitely different than mechanical. Um, in Engineering 101, you'll work with MATLAB, which is a type of coding program. And so I realized that I really enjoyed that and I wanted to keep going. And in all honesty, I didn't know if it would be possible, but I spoke to my advisor and she definitely helped me. And um, she got me on the right track to getting a minor. Most of our minors are only a few extra classes. You don't have to go out of your way to, you know, try and get a minor. It's not like it's going to make you stay in school for an extra semester. Um, most of the classes are also embedded with some of the classes you're currently taking. So you can knock out two different areas with take while taking one class. So that's what I really like about it. But um, I definitely like how UK um, pushes for us to go out of our range. I know mechanical engineers with dance minors. Um, it's definitely possible. You know, you don't have to stay in the STEM field um, of your minors. You can definitely go out, get a dance minor or something in music. Um, so I definitely like how all of our minors are diverse. We have a minor for every college. So it's, that's very nice. 
Yeah, I know. I know. I have some friends in the engineering too. They have the dance minus as well. I'm not much of a dancer myself. Me but, neither. Uh, if we reach 200 viewers on this live stream, well, definitely, I might, <laughs> I might pop a dance over here on the platform as well. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of other things to do here at UK as well. So it's very important to like go out of sight of your comfort zone and add to those. Because sometimes you need to take a break for those STEM classes. They can really push on you. But uh, speaking of STEM classes itself, so coming into UK, what are, what are you guys, and Nathaniel's asking this from the chat box. Thank you, Nathaniel, for this question. What is the biggest academic challenge that you think is faced by freshman year students in engineering or just in general here at UK? And if, Zach, would you like to start us off? I think the biggest challenge for freshmen is definitely the workload. Um, you know, when you come into engineering, the workload is probably something that you didn't see in high school. Um, if you did take, you know, a lot of AP classes, you know, that might be able to reach the coursework uh, that engineering expects you to maintain. Uh, sometimes that's your calculus, your physics, chemistry, um, you know, they expect you to, you know, do a lot of work and, you know, that is required uh, for a foundation in engineering. And if you can get ahead of that and, you know, through the coursework, then I think you're really prepared uh, to be successful in engineering. I would say um, one of our biggest challenges is sometimes not everyone will utilize all of our amazing resources here. So sometimes in high school, you know, you may be the type of student who barely had to study for an exam and you would automatically get a 100%. Well, that's not always the case in college. You know, sometimes you might study really hard and you might get a B. And so um, I would just say making sure that you're looking for those resources such as the study or Mass Scholar, which is where a place where you can get tutored in all of your 100 and 200 level courses or the Writing Center. You can go there, they can help you with your papers and all that type of stuff. So just utilizing the resources we have, um, that's definitely helpful. Yeah, and I would say I entered in without any of those basic classes. I had no calculus, no chemistry, no physics in any of my high school. And I was so stressed coming in my first semester. But those resources are really amazing. There's so much free tutoring on campus. Um, if you just establish your study habits, you know, getting your footing your freshman year, I feel like it's some of your easier classes throughout my time. But I did have a struggle just learning how to study, really, because it is very different than high school. Yeah. One thing I would say is the major part of, I had to get used to is time management. So sometimes what people don't like realize is that when you get here into college, you do have a lot more free time than you would actually in high school. Like, but at the same time, you got to use that free time well, and you got to space it out. So sometimes, yeah, you might have to sacrifice not going out, uh, hang out with your friends, and instead maybe study a bit more for that test coming up. I definitely know I should have done a bit more of that my first year. So <laughs> definitely keep an eye on that, folks. But over here, Nathaniel, uh, not Nathaniel, sorry about that. But I do want to ask about the minors and major certificates that we talked about before. So do you have to have a minor that's related to your major? What, what, what do you, what do you um, no, so I am in one that's more engineering specific. So um, it does not matter what engineering you are, but peak, uh, you can get certified in that. So there are some obviously that meld better than others with our coursework. So for me, I think it's only like three additional classes. And then there's an environmental engineering certificate that would have only been, you know, one additional class for me. Um, but no matter what those are, you can do it. You just need to speak with your advisor. Obviously, we've talked about how great our advisors are, and they can try and help you figure out what the best route is. Yeah, I know I'm, one of my roommates is actually, he's a music minor, so he does some jazz as well. Mm -hmm. Really great on the trumpet. Just went to an orchestra concert, I think, last week. So really great. They put on a good show here at Singletary <laughs> here at UK. So speaking of, I know we touched a, a bit about it throughout this whole conversation, but uh, you know, one of the things especially that's important for every student is the resources that UK provides or any of the college that provides. So how about you guys, if you could talk about some of the tutoring services that we offer here at UK to kind of help you with your academic goals. Will, mm -hmm. you mind starting us off? So obviously we've talked about the study. So there are multiple study locations, no matter where you live on campus, but obviously we're probably partial. There is one right downstairs in the engineering dorm that comes, I believe, every day but Thursday. I'm not sure on that, but um, it was so convenient my freshman year. I lived on the first floor. If I was confused on a math problem, I'd literally just walk out the door and go right there to a tutoring service. So I was partial to that one, but we also have Tau Beta Pa tutoring and FPAT, as well as Jayla mentioned the math scaler and so much more. Even if you want a private tutor, I know that there's connections with the private tutor as well. So. Yeah, I was definitely going to branch off a little bit about Math Scaler. Um, like I said, they tutor in your 100 and 200 level courses. What I really like about most of our um, tutoring services is that everyone is so nice. They want to help you. Um, they're never rude. So you can come to them with as many questions as you want. 
their job is literally to help you. So they're always very helpful and they want to see you um, succeed. And then I also like it because um, all of our tutors, um, they had to have either an A or B in the class. So I always know that um, the content that I'm getting is definitely crucial and important. Um, but yeah, they're definitely always helpful whenever I've gone. And I always leave feeling like I really, feeling more knowledgeable in the class. So that definitely makes me feel better at the end of the day. So especially when you get into your upper level engineering courses, I think the best resource ultimately is your professors. Uh, I can't speak for the other departments in the college, but you know the Department of Mining Engineering. A lot of the professors encourage you know open dialogue with their students. I've I go to my professors' offices, you know, all hours of the day, um, you know, asking about homework or just life advice or questions about you know what internships should I take, uh, and that's just an overall resource uh, because you know they're here for our students and they want us to succeed. So. I really enjoy their resources. Yeah, there's a lot of things that would help you here at UK. And there's a lot of people here who actually just, they want to see you succeed here, no matter what you're studying or no matter what department you're in as well. But I will say, and thank you guys for asking all these questions. Remember, if you do have any more, feel free to post them in the chat box below. We love seeing them over there. Now, I do have another question here from the chat box. And would you say that anything here at UK, maybe in the College of Engineering, pertains to robotics or anything of the sort like that? So, yeah, I would say um, project based like clubs are definitely a big thing to get into. I know that a lot of people get involved in the Innovation Center from robotics. Um, there's a club, I believe, for robotics. I'm not sure of the name of it. But um, if you're interested in, I know a lot of people are interested in robotic prosthetics that are doing biomedical, or I have friends that are doing computer engineering with that interest. So I would definitely say, while it's not my specialty, I know people who are here for that. Sam, it's not my specialty either, but I have a few friends who have done research dealing like with robotics. And then of course, there's always the Innovation Center. And another thing I like about the Innovation Center is if like, you don't know what to do, like they can train you. Um, um, how to like use a certain different machines in there too, so. I think one unlikely place you'll see robots is the mining industry. Uh, so currently a lot of professors are researching automation uh, and a lot of autonomous uh, units. Uh, so right now one of our professors is look, looking at an autonomous robotic uh, roof bolter. Uh, so in mines where, you know, the roof might be very unstable and might collapse, you know, it might be dangerous for you know, miners to go in that area. You know, if you have a robotic roof bolter uh, to go and support that roof, you know, it's a lot safer for, you know, everyone involved. And then also you can take automation courses. And then uh, there is one graduate level uh, robotics course in the mining department. Well, a lot, of, a lot of opportunities here for robotics if you're interested in that. I know especially a lot of mechanical engineers and electrical engineers, they do a lot on robotics as well because they're interested in that. Of course, computer science, if you ever want to go into that, <laughs> we do do coding. I think you got you think you got to code robots. So I think there's something there. There's something there for everyone. But Campbell here asked, and thank you, Campbell, for sending us this question. So we did talk about free time early on over here and how using it and using it wisely, especially with time management. And how about we just, if you guys want to explain kind of what your weekly schedule kind of looks like here at UK, just like a brief overview of that. How about we start with you, Zach, and then we'll go on over. So my schedule can be very hectic at times. Um, so I always plan ahead. So I have uh, a Google Calendar where I lay out all my courses uh, and then I try to block out times to uh, work on homework and assignments um, and that those hours can range from day to day and week to week. Um, and then, you know, I also have my club activities. So every week we meet on Wednesdays for Society of Mining and Mining Engineers and then I lay out all my club activities. Uh, so you have to be very flexible when it comes to to time management, you know, I'm busy all day. When I wake up in the morning, I go to class and then I might not come home until, you know, 9 or 10 p.m. because I'm out, uh, you know, working on club activities or homework or you know, the various things that I keep myself busy from day to day. Kind of like Zach, my um, schedule is also very busy. Um, as a resident advisor, I have to keep up with 31 different residents, which can definitely be a little crazy sometimes. I love them all, but it's definitely a busy job. <laughs> Um, and then also just going through all my classes each day. Um, I have a lot of breaks in between. So just making sure that I take um, time to eat in between those and then also, you know, self care giving if I need to take a break and just listen to some music in a chair making sure that I take the time to do that. And then kind of like that, um, all of my club activities. So if I have an executive board meeting at the library and then um, making sure I go get dinner after and then go to my dorm kind of the same. I don't get home till around nine. 
but it's never a drag because I'm always doing something that I love. When you're doing things that you love, it doesn't feel like a chore. You know, it just feels like you're going through a normal day. So, yeah, I would say the same thing. You know, um, it seems overwhelming when I say how many things I'm involved in, and people will be like, "Oh, how are you doing all that?" But it's really stuff I want to do. So I do get enjoyment out of the clubs that I choose. So while they are taking up my time, it's also kind of a break for me because I want to do it. Um, there's different people have different preferences on schedules. You can obviously work around. If Jayla has a lot of breaks, I prefer to put all my classes together, get it through, and then have a break after. So my week is a little more wake up, finish class, do homework, club activities, and then if I need to do homework for the rest of the night. But you do have the freedom to see what you like, especially your freshman year when there's less going on, and make your schedule around that. Yeah, so that's one of the things those advisors come in really uh, handy for. They really help you kind of set up your class schedule, what you want it to look like. I know sometimes maybe you want an easy Friday or you don't want to take any classes on Thursday. They can help you kind of set it up and so it's a, uh, have you a better time here to kind of manage everything. I know, for example, just to give a rundown of my Monday today, I had classes from 10 to 12. Then I ended up touring as a tour guide from the visitor center, had lunch, another class from three to four. And then now I'm here today with these wonderful guys over here for the engineering live. So. But yeah, thank you for asking that question, Campbell. So over here, we have another question from Nathaniel from the chat box, and thank you for sending that in. So in chemical engineering, so I know we don't have any chemical engineers here, but I know you guys know some chemical engineers. So in chemical engineering, is there a lab for chemicals or experiments, including projects for students? Yes, so I do know a bit about this. So the chemical engineering it has a really big emphasis actually on their lab space. So it's in the basement at FPAT and you will have junior and senior level courses in there and they go through um, a lot of distillation. I think the entire process of distillation is covered in there as well as um, many other processes. Obviously I'm not a chemical engineer but I do know what their lab looks like and you'll get in there both junior and senior year outside of even their you know, senior project kind of deal which would also be hands on. So yeah, thank you for asking that. And then we, and hopefully Nathaniel, that answered your question over there. So yes, definitely some lab spaces for our students over here in Kemi. So Chris over here asked another question. And again, guys, thank you for sending us the questions. <laughs> Feel free, keep on sending them in. We love answering them over here for Engineering Live. But Chris asked, can you go in more detail about the computer science program? And do you have a data science program? And you know, halfway through reading this, I realized he was talking to me about this since I think I'm the computer science major that's up on over here. So yes, the computer science program. So what it is, just to go into more detail, you don't actually have to know any coding, you don't have to have any coding experience to actually go into the computer science program. Your first classes that you'll take is complete introduction. So if you know a bit of computer science, you know what I'm talking about, it's complete introduction, you'll know what variables are, how to use them, right? an if statement, a for loop, and things of that nature. So it's completely introductory. And also in that EGR 102 class during your freshman year, you're doing some MATLAB coding as well, which will teach you just some basic coding procedure as well. But yeah, for coding, for, in computer science, you start off learning C++, and then you have some more classes of that nature. Then you go into other classes where, depending on your professor, you'll be studying different languages. So I know I had a class where I learned a bit of C Sharp, some Java, and right now I'm in a machine learning class, so I'm learning some Python as well. And they, it's a great experience, they kind of help you, they understand that maybe this is your first time learning that language, and they kind of help you go through those steps so you kind of ease your way into it. But yeah, you don't have to have any experience in computer science to go into that. And in terms of the data science program, we do actually have, do have some data science classes here. One of our classes that I was actually looking into taking was a DS501, which is a foundations of data science. So now a lot of times when you're interested, and I know we talked about it earlier in the engineering life, if you're interested in kind of that intersection between engineering and business, some of those data science classes are very uh, important with those analytics and things like that. So yeah, definitely a program to check out over here. So William asks in the chat box, do you guys offer a fifth year engineering master's program or any sort of program to get a master's in engineering faster than a traditional program? So I know we do have a university scholars program. So Zach, if you want to talk a bit of that. So I'm enrolled into the university scholars program and it's very similar to doing your master's in a fifth year. Um, so what that program allows you to do is, you know, take undergraduate level courses at a graduate level. Uh, so last fall, I was enrolled into two graduate level courses. And then this upcoming spring, I'm involved in two graduate level courses. And so, you know, they, the professors will treat you like a grad student. Um, 
you know, the expectations of when I was in the classroom was, you know, I was to think like a graduate level student and I was to, you know, work on homeworks and projects at a graduate level. Um, so it is, you know, some extra work on top of your undergraduate level course and you can earn, earn uh, dual credit. So, you know, I was getting my undergraduate level grade and then a graduate level grade as well. Uh, and so when I graduate, you know, with my undergraduate degree, I will uh, then be moving on to my master's in one year. Yeah. Definitely a good way to get ahead of the program over there. So yeah, definitely something to look into if you're ever interested in getting your master's here at UK. I know in terms of like MBA, we also have like Lily stated before, we have that one year MBA program, which is actually a dual degree also with engineering. So if you're ever interested in that, definitely something to look into as well. But thank you, William, for sending in that question. And thank you guys for sending in all the questions you have so far. But I do have just some more some fun questions for you guys over here just about UK itself. So how about we just go down, we'll go start from Lily, but can you tell us your favorite place to eat on campus? My choice is the Nandi, which is the dining hall, which is closest to Woodland Glen 3. I'm very partial to the little segment called Taste of India. It hits every time. <laughs> I second that vote. It is definitely the 90, hands down. Um, they've definitely upped it since my freshman year. They have added so many different stations. My favorite would be the Zen Walk. Um, it's kind of like a Chinese based. Um, they have Chinese food, um, rice, chicken, broccoli, all of that. I eat it probably every single day. It's amazing. <laughs> So definitely that. And then they also have tons of ice cream flavors. So definitely something you should try. I think the best place to eat on campus is definitely Chick-fil-A. Um, you know, I think if uh, there's three, there used to be, you know, there's two locations of Chick-fil-A now. Uh, so North Campus or South Campus. So I have two places to go get my chicken sandwich. So. Yeah. But those two locations is a pretty popular destination spot here at UK for all the students. I know my favorite place is the Rising Roll. They have a really good breakfast burrito in the mornings. It's the salsa too. So like, it's pretty nice actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lily's seen me eating in marketing class, so I definitely brought it in some <laughs> couple of times. But uh, William over here, he wants to ask, he has another question about UK. So he's looking into, so he says, what about UK is better than smaller colleges that focus on engineering as well? So Lily, how about you talk about some of the advantages about being a big university like UK, about UK engineering as well. Yeah, so we are a big campus, so we have all these resources that we've been talking about. Obviously, that's something that a lot of smaller colleges just can't afford. Um, however, I do still get that small feel. I'm in biosystems engineering and pretty similar to mining. We've got between 20 and 40. I think my entire class size is like 25 people. So I know every single one of their names. I know all my faculty. So I still have that small feel while in my department, but I have all the benefits like our amazing dining halls of a bigger college. And then speaking um, off of that, even though we are a bigger college, because we're a bigger college, we have a lot more um, funding. So there are tons of engineering scholarships that you can apply for that definitely help, um, especially if you're an out-of-state student. I know speaking as an out-of-state student, um, the engineering scholarships have definitely helped me. And then um, just with that, they just pour a lot more love into our engineering program. There are so many different engineering events going on that you can join, um, different engineering events. They, in Woodland Glen 3, they will invite speakers to come um, from Lockheed Martin or all these great companies that will speak to our students, um, give them some advice for working in the field one day. So um, just the opportunities. So I think a lot of people can get tunnel vision on engineering itself. But when you look at the university as a whole, you know, it's a very diverse place in terms of, you know, academic programs and majors. And so at a small, you know, university, well, what if all of your friends are engineers as well? You know, I am able to hang out with people who are unlike me, even though, you know, when I did live in the dorm freshman year, I was hanging out with a lot of engineers. I think now as I've gotten older and, you know, gone through more years of college, I think I really enjoy, you know, seeing the perspective of different students as well, you know, who have a different, you know, goal and outcome of college as well. Um, and I think you can't find that at small engineering schools who, you know, really focus in on engineering as well. Yeah, one of the great things about having a big university is definitely the resources. There's definitely there's more resources for involvement in terms of clubs for engineering or just any clubs in general. We have over 550 different student organizations here at the University of Kentucky, but also research as well. So a lot of different research opportunities and those career fairs about like mm -hmm. maybe like 50 plus companies show up in the spring and in the fall just to have right over here in the Gantt Student Center actually where we're at and they put up their booths. There's recruiters talking to students. Great way of making connections as well. So, but like Lily said, you still can get that small feel here at UK. So you can definitely, there are definitely opportunities to make your own community here at the University of Kentucky. Now, 
Campbell, uh, Nathaniel actually over here has a question. So he wants to know how many of your classes are taught by actual faculty? And uh, do you get a lot of face-to-face -face time with your professors? Yeah. I'll start off. I know that um, obviously that first year, you're with first year faculty. So that is not really, I'm not counting that. After I moved into biosystems, um, so my sophomore year, at first it was one or two classes a semester that was with like my biosystems faculty. And I know that the first teacher I had was actually also my advisor. So um, I know her very well. And then I know that there's also teachers who both do research and I have friends who will take a class and then have research with that same professor. And I know by our senior year, most of us will be completely with the faculty in our prospective majors. So it's definitely a lot of time uh, with those professors. Yeah, I would say I definitely think you get a lot of time um, with the same faculty. Like I know for mechanical engineering, some of the teachers that I have will teach um, more than one class that you'll take. So I know my current statics teacher, I'm hoping to have her again for solids next semester. Um, I would definitely say that you get a whole lot of face-to-face -face interaction. Um, they, like I said, they want to see you succeed. So as long as you, you know, go out of your way after class, you know, talk to them, say your name, get to know them, then they're, they will definitely reciprocate the same energy. I think the one exception for the mining department was we do have an industry lecturer as well. Uh, he teaches the mine health and safety uh, leadership course and uh, you know he worked for the Reagan administration so that is you know one unique uh, aspect of our college you know we do have one course taught by industry people but then you know for the for the most part we all of our classes are taught by faculty in the mining department yeah and almost pretty much all professors have office hours as well and so there's, there's those are allocated times each week where they have an open door policy. You can come on in, talk to them about pretty much anything, maybe what they're researching, or we just have any questions about the class itself. Now, I just want to let you guys know we will be wrapping up in about 10 minutes. So you, if, if you have any additional questions, please put them down in our chat box below, and we'll try to get to them as well. But uh, Campbell here, he wants to ask, are all of the engineering buildings in the same general area, or like how far away are the different buildings that we'll, you'll have to go to as an engineering student? Jill, would you like to start us off? Yeah, so um, the engineering dorm is on the south side of campus. There's really one dorm typical for engineering students. Um, if you want to live in a different building than Woodland 3, that's perfectly fine. But um, Woodland 3 is our main engineering dorm for those students. Um, the majority of our engineering buildings is in the engineering annex slash courtyard. Um, it's on the other side of campus, north, north side. So we have FPAD, Argon. Oliver H. Raymond. Um, so it's definitely near the student center. It's definitely a more livelier area. Um, it's about a 10 minute walk from Southside, but it's definitely worth it. You know, scenic routes all the way down. <laughs> um, but yeah, so most of our engineering classes over there. And then of course, still you do take engineering 101 in the engineering building, Woodland Glen 3. So that's definitely um, a plus. I know people when I was taking it, they would literally come out of the elevator still in their pajamas and just roll on into class and it was completely normal. <laughs> Jack, if you want to talk about the mining department as well? With the yeah, so I feel like I'm always saying the mining department is the <laughs> exception here because the mining department, we are outside of the engineering complex. So we have the mining minerals and resources building smack dab in the center of campus uh, between Wood Woodland Glen 3 and the engineering complex. Uh, you know, I feel like we kind of live in our own little world because all of my classes are in the same building. I think as you get further and further into the degree, uh, you leave the building less and less. So uh, for me, I love that because, you know, there's not a lot of travel in between classes. I go to the lab and I do my homework and then I go back to class, you know, an hour later. And so it really saves, you know, on the kind of walking around campus uh, and really minimizing your, you know, your just expended time. Yeah. Lily, you want to talk about the other buildings? File systems is also kind of an exception. So we still have, have classes, like she mentioned, FPAT in that engineering quad. Um, but a lot of our classes are actually on the agricultural side of campus, so back on South Campus, um, which can be a bit of a trek, but like he said, it's not really that inconvenient because by the time it's your senior year, most of your classes are in there. So after you get there, they have a student commons in that area. You kind of just stay there, a common grounds, coffee if you're into that. Um, so yeah, we're on the agricultural side of campus. 
Yeah, I know for computer science, we're pretty much just all on the north side of campus when Whitehall Classroom Building, which is just right across from the engineering complex as well. So a lot of your classes are kind of in that academic core on the north side of campus. So it's pretty nice what we have over here at UK in terms of just walking around on campus. Now we do, one of the questions I do often get a lot is that if freshmen can bring a car onto campus and if they even need one here at UK. Now I will answer that first question. So every student, including freshmen, can bring a car onto campus. All you have to do is just purchase a parking pass. There's limited residential parking, so more often than not, you'll be parking at the parking lots next to Kroger Field, a football stadium. Great place to park. The one thing is that on home games, you gotta get up. And you got to move them because we use that space for tailgating. But a lot of spaces on the weekends become free for our students to park in. But uh, how about uh, you three, how about you talk about, did you feel like you had to bring a car into campus or like what was your idea with transportation here at UK? Really? Um, I bought a car pass and then I didn't need it. So I ended up bringing my car home after the first semester. But I know uh, if you're going to do that, you have to have a friend who does have a car. So <laughs> I would say I didn't find much use for it. I stayed pretty close to campus, but I know some people do. Yeah, so I would say uh, I did not have a car freshman year. I walked everywhere, but I will say I love walking. The best part about walking is, like I said, we have a very beautiful campus. Um, it's nice just walking around, walking from one place to the other, the next. I also like how uh, nine times out of ten you'll see someone that you know, so it's just a nice conversation of walking with someone. And then also we have an amazing bus system. So we have bus routes on campus. They run pretty sure usually till midnight i know the hours have changed because of covid but i'm pretty sure they start at like 6 a.m and end around midnight each day um they come every 10 minutes many bus stops all around campus from north side to south side and even in the middle so i definitely took advantage of that they're really nice they're clean i always get on the bus they're nice people and then um it takes me to my next spot very quickly so um that's what i utilized my freshman year always got on the bus always got on the um or, or just walked and i always felt safe um never felt you know, bad. So definitely use the bus system we have here. You know, and I think if if you want a vehicle on campus, you can. You know, there's a lot to do around Lexington and the surrounding areas. Uh, but you know, after my freshman year, you know, the community that I found, you know, you can find someone to just carpool with. If you want to go somewhere on the weekend, you know, there was someone that you know you would take you and your buddies to go out to you know maybe Keeneland or to the movie theaters and you know hang out around Lexington, but, you know, if you wanted to stay on campus, we have all the resources for you to, you know, live and, you know, enjoy your time here at UK. Yeah, so definitely, it's just kind of up to you how you want to find that, but like uh, Lily says, if you don't have a car, find a friend who does have a car. That's always <laughs> a great thing here about it. So one other question that we got was, can you dual major for something like chemical engineering and biology? Was there even a biomedical, is there a biomedical or biochemical engineering major that we offer here as well? So I'm on the biology side, so I guess I'll take that. We do have biomedical starting this year. Well, no, last year actually, wasn't it? So we have biomedical as well as biosystems. So that's medical related, or if you want to go more, what I do is just biological systems. So environmental or agricultural related, uh, we do have both of those options. Or you could double major if you wanted to with chemical and bio biology, yeah. that's definitely doable. So you can definitely double major. Um, I have friends who are doing computer science and computer engineering. Um, a lot of the classes go together depending on what you pick. Um, what I like is how the advisors are definitely for it. They're not gonna speak you out of it. Um, when you meet with them your freshman year, you just tell them right off the bat, hey, I'm considering double majoring in um, both of these majors, what do I do? They talk you through it, they walk you through it step by step. They'll help you come up with a four year plan where you can plan out what classes you need to take and at what time just to um, fill the requirements for both majors so don't think okay if i have to double major i'm going to be alone no your your advisors were made for that so if you do want to do that they will help you get all the credits you need for both of the majors so there's no added stress with that um, if you want to do both the advisors will definitely be there for you every step of the way i, I think for me you know if i look at it in a very practical sense you know, like what degree do you need to be employable? Uh, and for, you know, when I answer that, you only need one degree. And depending on what you want to do, or if you don't know what you want to do, or you want a, a variety, then, you know, double major. I know a lot of electrical engineers, computer scientists, and computer engineering's triple major sometimes, even double major. And, you know, they have a lot of options. But for myself, you know, I find it sufficient just to have one major. And so if you ask yourself, you know, what do I need to succeed? And you know, you have all those options in front of you. You know, it's just not a double major. It could be a single major as well. Yeah, just kind of what what up? It's a, 
what works for you as a student here and kind of what you see doing yourself in the future. And of course, doing your path here at UK, if you want to add it, go on ahead and throw that in. I know I added my business minor just last year, so definitely something you can always do. And that's what the advisors are here for, kind of. So another question that we had over here from the chat was, what is campus life like and kind of like the diversity on campus? How do you feel? Maybe not just campus, but also in engineering as well. So, Lily, you want to start and then you know? So if you take a tour here on campus, like we've mentioned, just look around at how many posters there are of everything there is to do. So we're all involved in various different activities. You can find what's right for you. I know there's something going on literally almost every day. Lots of free food and t-shirts. I know that's my favorite thing, but I haven't felt like there's any time where if I wanted to be doing something, I couldn't find something to do here on campus. And then um, speaking about the diversity aspect, so I think that our College of Engineering does a great job in that relation. Um, as a person of color, I was definitely scared coming to a PWI and wanting to do engineering. But what I found was NSBE, and so that's National Society of Black Engineers. So that was kind of like a community for me. What I also liked is how many different other organizations there are for different people of different races, colors. So we have Society of Women Engineers for females. I know we have Society of Hispanic Engineers as well. Um, I know we have a few engineering fraternities just for the men. So um, when it just overall, when it comes to diversity, I think that the College of Engineering definitely does a good job and goes out of their way um, for the different races and all of that. I think the mining industry is also a very unique, uh, you know, degree program. When it's like it's one of the first international, uh, you know, markets because when you think about how diverse the industry is you know if you're in one mine in the united states you might be competing with people in africa or south africa and so you have a lot of students from international countries you know uh here at the university studying mining engineering uh, so we have a lot of omani students a lot of uh, ghanaian students um so you know the mining department uh, strives to be very inclusive uh you know in the department you know we really encourage uh, the diversity of amongst students and especially the relationship with undergrads and graduate students. Um, and so, you know, it's just one aspect that I really enjoy, you know, learning about the other various cultures that the mining industry offers, uh, because you do, you might also end up working overseas after, uh, you know, school. So that is something you need to, you know, start focusing on and learning about. Yeah, I know one uh, diverse aspect is also here at UK. I know one thing I recently attended throughout this semester and also a bit of last year as well was we have an Asian American Association over here. So it's a great place also to meet people who kind of just look like me as well. And so it's the greatest thing that we have here at UK in terms of diversity as well. So don't feel like you're going to be left out here at UK. There's always something, some organiza organization or some club that you can make your own community and make you feel kind of uh, wanted here at UK as well. So you're more, just, more than just a number here at UK and to us. But we are getting ready to wrap up, so we only have time for one more question tonight. But before we finish up, I do want to know one more time that December 1st is the early action deadline to submit your application for the fall 2022 freshman class. So high school seniors, be sure to submit your application by December 1st if you haven't already. And also, I just want to encourage one more time, like I did in the beginning of this session, anyone who has not visited campus to consider doing so. So we offer online and in-person visits, and you can check out our visit options at egengr.uky.edu slash visit. And the link to visit us is also in the description below. But for that final question, and we'll just start with Lily and we'll go on down, do you guys have any recommendations for, for, these, for these high school seniors on how to prepare for college? Yes, so the thing I can say, and we've harped on it a million times, Get involved. That's the first thing. You'll enter into K Week and it'll be a super fun experience. You'll have a K crew leader. There's a ton of people here to help you along the way. Don't get too stressed out and just find your place because as soon as you find friends who can support you, I think studying and your coursework and everything will come a lot easier. And then piggybacking off of that, I would say make sure you take time for yourself and focus on self care and your mental health. Um, college can be a lot sometimes. So just make sure that you're putting yourself first and always, you know, making sure that you're good um, mentally first. I think mine really wraps up with Lily and uh, Jayla is the fact that this is your own journey. You know, when you start freshman year, you know, get involved, but realize that your path towards graduation and, uh, you know, getting a job after school is very unique. You know, there are endless amounts of opportunities here at the university. And, you know, you can choose from a variety of internships and co-ops and, you know, that your path is unique to you. 
And so the only person that knows what's best for you is yourself. And so you know, the resources and opportunities that you he have here at UK you know, can assist you along the way, but ultimately it's your decision, it's what you want to do, and we're here to support you. Yeah, so what I always like to say at the end of my tours as well is that it's kind of up to you to kind of push yourself out of your comfort zone sometimes and grab at those resources and opportunities here at UK. Like Zach says, it's kind of all individualized to you. You kind of build your own path here, kind of make your own college experience, and hopefully something that you can look back on favorably, whether it be hopefully here at UK and the College of Engineering. But we are about out about a time, so we are at the top of the hour. So I want to say thank you to everyone who watched and who participated today. We loved answering all your questions, and we really appreciate you taking your time during your night to come see us and join us here on this broadcast. For anyone who has any questions about anything that wasn't covered tonight or any other unrelated topics, please feel free to contact us at visit at engr.uky.edu or text us at 859-267-1877. Thank you again, guys. Good night, and go Cats.